Faith Family United Church of Christ. Here at Faith Family. Here at Faith Family, we are an open and affirming <coughs> congregation. children are welcome to come and worship here. And we have a little saying that we do every Sunday. No matter where you are on your life's journey or where you are on your spiritual journey, you, you are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Amen. All are welcome here. All right. Well, today is the day after Veterans Day. Yesterday was Veterans Day. And, uh, the day before was the observance of Veterans Day, and I hope you saw on our Facebook page, I put a list of all the places you can go and get free or discounted meals if you were a veteran. Um, what did I get? Ikea. Oh, we went to Ikea. I got the Swedish, Swedish meatballs for free. So. I, I got the potatoes. Huh? But we, we just want to recognize the veterans. If, if just stand up and or raise your hand all the veterans that, that are we have. There you go. It's it's a it's a selfless brotherhood is what I like to say. Brother and sister. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your service. All right. 
So let's go to our uh, call to worship. Uh, we bow down. Oh, thank you, most loving God, for waking us up today. This we pray. Lord, Lord in our hearts. This weekend, we recognized our military veterans for their services with the observance of Veterans Day. Lord God, creator of all and author of peace, as we are ever mindful of the cost paid for liberty that we possess, we ask you to bless the members of our armed services. Give them courage, give them hope, and give them strength. May they ever experience your most firm support and gentle love and compassionate healing. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Most living God, most loving God, bring all our departed veterans into your kingdom and console their families with your unfailing love. We ask you to heal our wounded veterans through the power of the Holy Spirit and give all our veterans the satisfaction of having served you, even as they served us. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Help this world to know what is wrong and what is right. Provide peace and hope to those who are suffering from injustice. Show them that you are there and that you care for them <coughs> and that you will make all things right. God, we pray for a world full of love and compassion. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, wash away the wounds of war, violence, and hatred. Help us to remember how Jesus named the peacemakers as blessed, and to know that we that if we really wish for a peaceful world, that we should honestly pray. Let it begin with me. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those that are struggling in their lives. Bring them hope to an end of their sufferings and a resolution to their difficulties. Show us the best way to help those who suffer without being intrusive, but also without, without simply turning away from their pain. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the elderly and the homebound, that they may be cared for with loving compassion and experience God's love through their caregivers. We ask prayers for those fighting various addictions. We ask prayers for Patty and Frank's daughter, Allie. We ask healing prayers for Barb as she is in the hospital once again. They plan to send her to rehab Tuesday if her blood count improves. We ask prayers for Chris as he's working on his new, in, new career in encouragement and he takes his final exam this coming Saturday. And 
we ask that you do prayers for Lou as he awaits his second surgery. Oh God of love, we ask that you hear these intentions and all those we have been asked to pray for. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, continue to protect us in your grace. Provide for our needs that we may always trust you and serve you faithfully. Be with us as we move about in our neighborhood this week. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. I was just sitting there and I was thinking it happened on Tuesday but I have a praise and that's my own. my son and his wife Anna had a little baby girl and it's it's touching because um, they have had problems in the past and they were they, they were thought they thought they they would never be able to have children. And lo and behold, little Tilly was born on uh, Tuesday at uh, 8, oh, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, I think it was, uh, p.m. And, uh, and mom and, and baby are doing, are doing well. Awesome. So, yeah, praise God. Kind of like, kind of like, uh, <laughs> I read through, uh, um, Genesis um, the the other day, just this week, and uh, it reminded me of, of Abraham and Sarah not being able to have children, and then God gave them a child. So uh, that's how it feels right now. Um, oh, we're going the love and peace. That's what we're doing. My favorite times. More love and more peace, right? Uh, so for you out there in Facebook land. Uh, love and peace to you. Please type your love and peace at the bottom. Um, we love you, and uh, we're, we're glad that you tune in with us, and we'd love it even more if we, you could come here and we could share the love and peace in person because we're all going to stand up right now. We're going to hug each other, and we're going to fist bump, and we're just going to share the love and peace with one another. <laughs> He's Jackie. <laughs> Hey, you're doing a heck of a job. Thank you very much. Hi there. Hi there. There is. It's like a Yes, I'll be on blue side of the seat. Oh, thanks. I used to be the person. Did you see that? Me too. Good morning, church. Good morning. I think I, I'm feeling like I'm at the library here. There's books all over the place. So buckle up. It'll be a bumpy ride, I can tell. Uh, 
Uh, today's reading is uh, from Matthew, the 25th chapter. I think that's what it is. Yes, Matthew 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, a cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us you uh, and you. <clears throat> Instead, go to those who will sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I say to you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Praise God. All right. Read an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, portrayal of this this verse. It said, uh, if I can remember it, it says, "At that time, the kingdom of heaven." is like the ten virgins. They took their, their they took their flashlights and they went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them uh, were foolish and five of them wise. The foolish ones did not bring any extra batteries for their flashlights. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was cute. Uh, uh, you know what? You know where you find stories like that? In kids' books. You know, sometimes when 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 uh, they can break it down for a kid, I think it makes it more pleasing to, to read. Um, I love to read kids' books and see how they break it, a message down to kids. Um, one of the things growing my kids growing up, uh, I always told them, a movie is not just a movie. There's a purpose to it. A guy does not sit down and write a book just because he wants to, you know, uh, using, he, he, there's usually a purpose or there's a moral behind it. And you have to ask, what's that moral? And when Jesus tells his parables, of course, there's a moral to it. He doesn't just tell the parables. The parables are there usually to sting those that aren't listening or aren't doing what's right. Um, and that was mostly the religious leaders. So today, we're going to talk about these ten virgins who they were brought the bridesmaid, ten virgins. So that they're going to the to the to the wedding. So you all know what a wedding looks like. After the wedding's over, what happens? The bride takes the bouquet and she throws them, and all the single ladies. Oh no! All the single ladies <laughs> line up and try to uh, catch the book because they're the next one to get married. So basically, these ten women are going to the wedding and the wedding banquet to look for a husband. Kind of important for them, right? Especially in this time, if you didn't have a husband, yeah, you know, and you did, weren't under your father's roof, then. You had very limited no, occupations to say that. Yeah. So, it's kind of important. 
And Jesus here is saying that these, all these were invited. Get that? I said all really quick, but you can put that in big capital letters. All were invited. Some of them were excited. We're going to see something. We're going to do something. We're going to get married. Or we're going to find a husband so we can get married. And this is very important. We're waiting for this bridegroom to come so we can open the doors and get in there and get us a husband. Well, five of them were foolish. And they just showed up. Well, he's not here. The door's not open yet. So you wait. Five of them said, hey, what happens if it's a long time? Well, we're going to wait, so they got extra oil. So all of them were invited, but only five of them were prepared. That's important, because I'm going to take that and put it into context today. In our, in our Bible study this morning, we talked about how... Uh, in 2 Thessalonians, uh, the author writes and says that you're being led astray. People are already telling you the second coming has already happened, and it's not. We're still waiting on Christ to come back. And he goes on to tell. And that's kind of what we're saying here in our church today. We're waiting for Christ to come back. Now, are we going to be the foolish and just show up? Or are we going to be the five and be prepared? Watched the video yesterday. That guy was saying that the second coming has already happened. It already happened. It happened at 70 AD. Just about 40 years after Christ died. Really, when the temple was destroyed the last time, Christ actually came back at that time. And he goes on, he tries to give all these proofs. It's like, wow. How did that happen? How did that get by everybody? But anyway, that's just someone that is trying to scare people. And then, of course, we... I just brought up the, the book of Thess Second Thessalonians and just <laughs> commented on his post with with some of the things that uh, was said in there. Anyway, moving on. But they were coming to this banquet to get a husband, very important occasion, just like we're waiting for the bridegroom today. Now, there are people in the churches that are not prepared. They think that just being in the church, when I say church, being in the building, being in uh, a membership of a congregation is all you need to do. You, you know these people. Did you show up for church last week? I didn't see you in church last week. Like, that's the most important thing, to show up to church. Mike and where you at, Mike? Mike shows, uh, showed us what's the importance of being in the church last, not last week, the week before, when he went and he served people breakfast. He wasn't in this church building, but he was the church. He was doing what the church is supposed to do. And see, that's what I believe Jesus is trying to make a, a line between here. The idea of the oil the extra oil that they brought was the good deeds that we as a church are to do. The good deeds. Sharing of God's love and compassion. This is the oil. Because what's a, what, what does the oil do? What is the oil for here? They put it in a little jar they take a little wick, and stick the wick down in there, and the lit, it's the light. It's the oil that fuels the light. Just like today, it is the oil, or it is the 
good deeds. It's our sharing of God's love and compassion. That's the oil that makes our lights shine. It is the fuel that helps us to be the light to the world. See, the light you shine is only yours. That's why they couldn't give their oil up. Because if they give their oil up, then their light might not shine, be able to shine. See what I'm saying? Our light is the love and compassion that we share. It might be going and, and feeding people, serving them meals, or it might be taking them meals, taking them a glass of water or cold water. It might be taking them extra clothes. That's the fuel that light keeps our light burning bright. That's our oil, the mission and the sharing of God's love. But you can only do that for yourself. But when one person does it, and another person does it, and another person does it, you have a bright light. And what you have is you have a community of people shining that light of God's love to the world. It's also the wise ones that try to teach the foolish ones. Because they said, go and purchase your oil, right? That's like us today. By letting our light shine, we show people how to be in a community like ours, a loving community that takes care of each other. I think this is like when those outside of our community see the love that we have for each other and the love that we extend beyond this gathering here to the community. When they see that, that is our light shining before them and they get that example and they want to be a part of a community like that. And they learn as we, through our oil, our love and compassion, let our lights shine bright. Now many will try to tell you that this passage here is about getting to heaven. Because that's what that banquet feast is all about. They get into heaven. No, it's not necessarily about getting into heaven. It's about getting into a community that's based on See, when the five foolish come to the door, what happens? I do not know you. I can see the guy at the door opening and looking out and seeing this person because they trim their wig way back because they don't want to lose all their oil. So just have a little light shining. Can't recognize them. I don't recognize you. It's kind of dark out there. Why don't you light your light up? away. That's the people that don't understand what the church is all about. They think the church is about trying to get into heaven. No, it's about forming a community here on earth. It's about forming a community where everybody filled with oil, filled with good deeds, filled with love and compassion for God shines that light and takes care of each other. See, what happens here is these ten women, these ten young virgins, looking for a man, looking for a husband, they go and they stand out there They wait. Okay, what does that sound like to you? Kind of like Christianity? It's been 2,000 years. And we're still waiting. Many of us have fallen asleep. 
literally and the figurative death. Many of us are getting complacent. Many of us aren't keeping our lamps lit or aren't, don't have the oil to let our light shine. You look around, why are there so many denominations? Because people are looking for a way that they can get comfortable in the church. You don't have to do anything. All we're doing is waiting, and we're waiting for that day. But we're not supposed to just wait. We're supposed to be prepared at all times. We're supposed to be shining the light to the world. It's about the here and now. One of the hardest things that I learned in the beginning when I went to Bible college was this idea of the kingdom of heaven. Where is the kingdom of heaven? Here. I'm looking at it right here. here. This is the kingdom of heaven. When you get in a community that seeks love and compassion, not only amongst ourselves, but in the people around us, in our communities, in our, in our cities, in our state, in our country. That's who we need to shine our light for because that is the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We have a community and we are building the kingdom of heaven here on earth.
I really don't like to talk about money. I don't like the fact that it takes so much to do some good things, but it does. That's the world we live in, unfortunately. Um, little story. While I was in uh, the military, my, my last duty assignment, I was part of a uh, um, warrior's transition team. Uh, wounded warriors. Um, I had had several surgeries and they put me in this unit to recover or to medically retire. So ended up medically retiring. Um, anyway, while I was in there, the job that I was doing was not my flight medic job or any other job. And I was actually loaned down to the chaplain, the local chaplain, and I would... Uh, be his assistant and do whatever they needed to do. One of the things was, and I got to go in on Sunday and uh, count the tithes from the different services. You always had two people. You had a soldier and you had someone from the congregation and you would count them all. And uh, I was doing it for the Catholic um, congregation. Um, and the guy across from me, as we're counting the money, he looks at me and he goes, why, why, where in the Bible does it say you have to give 10%? And I said, well, it doesn't say that. It actually says that uh, in the New Testament that God wants you to be a cheerful giver. In other words, mm -hmm. to, to give cheerfully. Um, so, oh, well, I always heard it was 10%. I said, well... If you go into the Old Testament, and uh, that's what I'm going to do for you here, um, I'm going to read the Old Testament. It's in Genesis. Remember I said I read Genesis this week? Yeah. I come across this, and I thought it was kind of fitting. But uh, in Genesis chapter 14, what happens is uh, Abram, it's not Abraham yet. He hasn't changed his name. But uh, Abraham, Abram, uh, goes out and finds out that his, his nephew Lot has been taken away by these other kings. They all got together and they went and they raided uh, uh, Gomorrah, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and took Lot away. And so when Abraham hears this, he goes and he gets up a bunch of, well, he gets together with other kings and they go out and they fight the other kings and they bring everything back. And uh, after they did their victory, it says in, in uh, Chapter 14, verse 17. After Abram uh, returned from defeating, uh, I don't even want to try that guy's name, uh, Kedor, Kedorlomer, and the kings applied, uh, allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shiva, that is the king's valley. There Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and he was the priest of the God Most High. And he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed are you, Abram, by God Most High, creator of the heavens and the earth, and blessed is be the God Most High, who delivered you and your enemies into your hands. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. So, he goes out, has his spoils of war, and he gives back to the God Most High through the priest of his death, a tenth. And so that's where we get that idea. It's in Genesis, first book of the Bible, chapter 14. A little edification. Jackie, as Jackie brings our offering forward, let us go ahead and sing the dog song. From the
God, we truly thank you for all the blessings that you give us in our lives. Father, we give back just a portion of our blessings to you, that it would be used to spread your love, your compassion to all of the world. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Before we get started with our communion, I just want to, uh, I, we're doing, we did it a little different last week, and we're going to do it a little different this week as well, or the same as we did last week, I should say. Um, same difference. Yeah, same, same difference as last week. <laughs> so um, we're, going to, we're going to have the ushers come forward, and they'll hold the plates and the chalice, and if you'll come back on, on, the, on the, your right side down that aisle and come and partake. And then you could you can go back to just using the, the the center aisle. I will be on the on the my right, your left, and uh, offering a blessing to anybody that would, would like a, a blessing. Um, so if you if you if you don't want a blessing, just go ahead and back to your seat after you do the communion. Now, if there's anybody that that doesn't want to, you know, um, the COVID's still out there, and we don't we won't you know uh, fault you if you decide to. Just let us know, and we can give you the little uh, individual cups, and you can protect the community that way. Um, so, with that said, let's, let us do communion together. Preparing our hearts. God of love, without boundary or condition, take from our hearts anything that is not of you. Break them open so that all falsehood, judgment, and selfishness fall from our hearts, making room for you and your love for all people. The bread. On this night, Jesus offered himself so that all might know love. He called to himself all who loved him and who he loved, and he ate with them. At the meal, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he offered to them, saying, Take this and eat. It is my body for you, my body broken open, my heart broken open for you and for all. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he then took the cup, the cup of blessing. Rising it, he blessed it, and he passed it to them, saying, Take this cup and drink it. It is the cup of the new covenant, a covenant of love. Love without boundary or condition. The cup of love that is poured out for you and for all. Do this in remembrance of me. Please join me in a prayer of transformation and consecration as you see uh, fit and choose to do so. God, we ask that you take these simple gifts of the earth, the wheat of the field, and the juice of the, uh, the, juice of the fruit, uh, the gifts in this room entrusted to each and every one of us, and transform them into our spiritual food, so that we may become whole and holy as you are whole and holy. May we become one in you as we become one body the body of Christ. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have the ushers come forward. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer um, to show our unity and of course, it is the Lord. It is the prayer that the Lord has to follow. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Please come as you see fit. Oh, 
Join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. God, we thank you for the grace that you give us. Thank you that you have shown us what that grace looks like through your son, Jesus Christ. We ask that that grace would fill us and that we would share that grace with each other as we share your love and we forgive each other as you forgave us. Thank you for your grace. In Christ's name.
I choose Wix for my. Excuse me. Didn't mean to interrupt you, darling. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Faith family. We have a ton of announcements today, so I have to put the uh, newsletter on my phone so I can remember all of them. Uh, so, beginning with the Thanksgiving potluck, which will be following service on November the 19th at 11.45 a.m. There will be a sign-up sheet available today, uh, or you can reply via an email to let us know what you would like to bring. But remember, uh, do not bring items that contain pork or dairy. This will be a meat meal, so in keeping with the kosher traditions, no pork, shellfish, or dairy shall accompany that. Okay? Uh, we are signed up to volunteer at Metropolitan Ministries on November the 18th from um, 2 till 5.30 p.m. We have a shift of six people, six slots that are available. Uh, if you would like to volunteer to be part of that, please see me uh, after service today and um, I will help you get signed up because any person that's going to be part of our group has to register individually and then sign on to the group. We need four families to sign up for candle lighting during the Advent season. Please reach out to Pastor Ed to sign up to do that. And of course, a reminder that after service today at one o'clock is the bingo fundraiser for the joint food pantry that we have with Congregation Beth Shalom. That's at one o'clock today. And if you have remembered to bring uh, 10 of the different canned goods or whatever that's on that list, you will get a free bingo card. So if you haven't remembered to do that, pop out, get down to the store, and come on back. All right? We are having, uh, well, there is a Christmas social event. Uh, we are looking to uh, go and uh, partake, whatever you want to say, at the Gay Men's uh, Chorus of Tampa Bay Christmas show called Let There Be Peace. It is going to be Friday, December the 8th at 8 p.m. at the Allendale UMC in uh, Pinellas County. So that's Friday, December the 8th at 8 p.m. Would like to purchase the tickets, you have to purchase the tickets individually, uh, but we'll show up there as a group. Uh, there was a um, link in the newsletter to do that. So you go to Gaiman's Course of Tampa Bay website to do that. We are having a Christmas gathering. Joe Scott and Mama Kay have generously offered to host our Faith Family Christmas gathering at their house. Uh, so it's a Christmas potluck again, and uh, we'll, it'll be at their home. Um, check the newsletter for the uh, for the address. Uh, the time is four o'clock to gather and five o'clock for the dinner. And again, there'll be a sign-up sheet for that as well. But that's not kosher. Okay. In fact, I think they're serving ham. If I'm not mistaken. I heard somebody was bringing ham. Ham. As I said, I think. I, and maybe some smoked pork. Oh my gosh! All right. Oh. Starting. January 2024, we're going to have a book club, and Cindy would like to give us a little message on that. So we're going to start a book club. Uh, it's not going to be traditional. We have to come and meet every week. We're going to uh, announce the book, and then a month later we'll get together and discuss it in a guided discussion. We'll also have a little private uh, Facebook group that we're going to do so that if you have thoughts or things you want to discuss during the time you're reading it, you're like, oh, this is a good point, you can post it in there, and we'll bring all that together during the uh, meeting. First book is going to be, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? Um, it's written by Dr. Martin Luther King, published shortly before his death. And the book is a foreword um, from Coretta, talking about what, you know the things that led up to the writing of the book. So it's extremely timely in what's happening in the world today. And we can see where the world can either fall into chaos or we can gather in community. So if you'd like to purchase it, I think um, Jackie ordered hers from Amazon, got it the next day for $10. It's also on Kindle or hardback. And also at that library, Ed, Ed also oh, yeah. checked it out from the library as well. So. Where do we go from here? Yeah. How long would they better meet? We'll meet a Sunday after church towards the end of January. 
weeks if you want to purchase it and start reading it over the holidays. You've got a couple months yet. Okay. Okay. Cool. Which time will be in order to get it read. All right. <laughs> so I'd like to remind you about our, some of our ministries that you would possibly like to be part of. Uh, our Food Angel Ministry. Uh, see Jill about that. Clothing for the homeless. Boots and blankets. The boots and blankets giveaway is probably going to be scheduled for sometime in January. So keep that in mind. Um, Jill, how about something to help that people really need out on the street? Blankets are always welcome because they need something to spread on the ground. Warm socks. Warm socks is something Sweat we don't pants. get too often. Um, right. So towels. Blankets. Towels. Towels. All of that stuff. Cheers. Anyway, uh, the youth group. Don't forget the youth group. Uh, please see Cindy if you're interested in participating in the youth group because you need to fill out a um, background, check. background check. Thank you. All right. And we're still searching for that music leader. And we have the uh, posting on our website of what that position is about and what all that. If you keep talking about it in all the places you go, because you never know when you're going to come across, oh my goodness, yeah, I know somebody who could do that. Um, let's see. So, um, we're also uh, launching the Fall in Action campaign. I'm encouraging our community to show up at every school board meeting across the state for months of September and October. That's the Parenting with Pride uh, mission of the UCC, Florida UCC Conference. Uh, we need you to go to the school board meetings. There are people that are showing up at school board meetings that are causing our school boards to institute policies that are reducing the education that our students are getting. They're not getting a diverse enough education. They're not getting a supportive enough education. Um, and the Florida Conference has put together a letter uh, that they're sending to the state that's going to be publishing in all the newspapers about how we feel that a diverse education that tells us the truth about all of our history is absolutely necessary. So we encourage you to go to the school board meetings. The school board meeting for the Hillsborough County uh, School Board is this Tuesday at 4 p.m. at the school board offices at 901 East Kennedy Boulevard. It's very easy to go online if you want to sign up to speak. Um, you don't have to, you just show up. We appreciate that. And uh, you can send a message to your school board members um, very easily on that same website. And uh, this coming Thursday, the LGBTQ caucus is having their equality social. Uh, this is a social where any organization that is equality minded is welcome to show up at this particular event at Shuffle on Tampa Street uh, at 6.30 p.m. Um, any of these groups are invited to bring a tape and display what they're all about and Faith Family is going to be there. So come and see us, and come and see all the other organizations that are going to be there. We have a great, wide diversity of equality-minded organizations, and you might just find one that you want to participate in, okay? That's uh, 6.30 p.m. at Shuffle on Tampa Street. I think that's it. No, that's not it. Dottie has something she'd like to yeah. say. I have two openings in hospitality for December that I'm hoping somebody will sign up. Two openings, that would be which weeks? Uh, Christmas Eve, and it's the first Sunday of the month. Oh, the first and Sunday first of December? Sunday of the month, which I can think of. Okay, it, okay first, right. first of December and Christmas Eve. And Christmas Eve. Okay, great, right. thank you. And then there's, there's usually oh, a book. There's usually a book in the back. On um, the table. On the table. You can just sign up right there. Mints. How did I pass over that one? It's not a newsletter because we have to sign in. Ah, okay. Yeah, we're we're look we're reaching out to Mints to do their their angel tree. Their their um, social worker gets with us, and gives us a list of families, and then we usually um, try to fill their their list for Christmas. 
and take care of the families with, with uh, gift cards for gas and different things like that as well. Yeah, the, the list will tell us which families need what. We, we can all divide that up. Yeah. We're looking at between five families at this point. So, thanks. And, and then I had one uh, uh, announcement. In uh, January, we're also going to start revisiting the sacred talks on race, identity, and diversity. So uh, race, identity, and diversity um, will come together after, uh, after service and just for, for uh, uh, you know, 15 or 50, half hour to an hour, talk about the different issues and what we're seeing and how we can affect our communities through those. Yes, that'll be once a month on, uh, on some other day that Cindy's not going to book club. So. <laughs> All right. Cindy's not the only one doing the book club. As you can see, I've got the book already. All right. Um, let us go ahead and encourage and uh, show our love for each other through our benediction. Christ has no body but ours, no hands, no wheels, nor feet but ours. Ours are the visions through which Christ's compassion is to look out on this world, and ours are the feet and wheels which with Christ goes about doing good, and ours are the hands with which Christ blesses us now and blesses all the world. Amen. All right, here we go. One of fast song. Get us going. <coughs> With thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will make for me and take me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will make for me and take me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, why? Right. Yeah. 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 May God bless you and fill your life with peace, love, and compassion as you seek the kingdom of God's love here on earth. Amen. 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 Amen.